So, we have looked at density, viscosity and Reynolds number. We are now left with the issue of forces, the fourth and the last aspect of the dynamic similarity between the prototype and the model. We will now straight away see the force issue. In the last simple shear, a single direction of force or stress whatever you say was applied, but in geological case there can be more than one directions where compression, extension, shear etcetera can work. If you look at the plate tectonic regime, how plates are behaving, deforming or in some smaller scale deformation, it is quite possible that there are more than one directions of stresses. For example, in this prototype we are talking about this, let us say here is a force F1 working in a prototype. And here is a force F2 working. And they are very large force, giant forces, gigapascal, megapascal, plate scale, plates are moving. So, it is a huge force being produced and they are deforming the some rock material. We want to simulate this deformation in the laboratory. So, we took a softer material with much lower viscosity than the real rock, maintain the geometric similarity. What, what do I mean by that? I mean to say capital A by B is equal to small a by small b, already done. Now, this mega Pascal force is not required to deform a soft clay material and it is unrealistic also. I am sure the instrument will be very expensive. We need a small amount of force to deform a clay material. So, here we can have a smaller force F1 applied and here a smaller force F2 applied. So, as you see capital letter and the small letter, what does it mean? It means that F1 is much more than F1, F2 is much more than F2. This F1 and F2, there are direct and indirect means of knowing through some studies what are the magnitudes of F1 and F2 and what are the directions in which F1 and F2 have acted. Now, in the laboratory small f1 and f2, we can manipulate, we can change this f1, f2 numbers. How? Using instruments, by measurements, we can constrain what is going on in our experiment. So, while we have no control on capital F1 and capital F2, we have at least one thing to do and that is the purpose of this force issue, f1 by f2 has to be equal to f1 by f2. In other words, we can write like that. Okay. So, this is what we have to maintain. Note another point here the angle between F1 and F2 line of action is 90 degree and we do not play with the angles. Just like geometric similarity case where we do not play with the angles, here also we do not play with the angles. We can put the pistons which would be compressing this soft clay in a manner that the line of action of force will be perpendicular to each other. If they were at an angle theta, we also need to give an angle theta between F1 and F2's line of action. Okay. So, this is all about two directions of forces. If there are three directions, same thing will work there. Be careful, this is a force ratio, not a stress ratioing. There is a difference. This is a force ratioing that has been done. Do not do sigma 1 by sigma 2 equal to sigma 1 by sigma 2, do not try that. If you do, then you are violating the pi theorem. What if there is a single direction of force, then this issue does not come at all. What if is a single material that is under deformation, density ratio issue does not come. Similarly, the viscosity ratioing issue does not come either. Okay. So, this is for more than one layer, for more than one layer this is for more than one directions of force acting simultaneously in the body and this is for be it a single direction of force or several directions of forces acting on the body, this calculation has to be made. 
So, the third aspect of the analog model 1G for ductile deformation, the principal issue which is coming from the pi theorem I am going to describe and it is the kinematic similarity. Here more than one event is involved in the deformation. What does it mean? This is a part of a geological time scale. 80 million year back some deformation started in the rock and which finished at 20 million year back. The deformation D has taken place in the prototype. And another deformation started and has happened from this is 80 to 10, 60, 30, 33, 5, 50 million year back and finished at 20 million year back. And this deformation is D star two deformation has happened in the rock may be one is compression another is shear may be compression was throughout there then in the late phase a shearing is activated in the rock or let us say D was a single deformation that has happened D star was an event some soft magmatic material which was hot also entered within the deforming rock body making the rock much more softer effectively. So, how this will be done in the analog modeling? So, in the model naturally we cannot run it for 80 million year to 20 million year. So, we have to think realistically. We can start the experiment 7 am in the morning and we want to finish this experiment at 7 pm at night. That means, it is a 12 hours experiment and here it is 80 minus 20 is equal to 16, 60 million year long event. Now, how do I choose 7 am to 7 pm? Why not up to 9 pm? The idea is that this D deformation 80 to 20 million year back gave certain manifestations, certain structures. Let us say I am able to generate them starting from 7 am to 7 pm reasonably. So, I will not go further. I will take it as 12 hours time span. Suppose I started at 7 am and finished at look at 10 am itself the deformation is produced those structures are found in the model what was there in the prototype. That means, then I will instead of taking 12 hours I will reduce this time. For kinematic similarity we will say that this 60 million year is equivalent to 12 hours. I can write 60 million year is equivalent to 12 hour 12 hours. If that is the case and here we run a D deformation I am writing small d. Now, when should I start D star in my experiment since 60 million year is equivalent to 12 hour therefore, half of the time this 12 hours so 6 hours from 7 am that means, 8 am, 9 am, 10 am, 11 am, 12 noon and 1 pm. This would be the span of acting small d star a similar event in the model. So, as you see there are more than one event d and d star they were not throughout simultaneous and we using kinematic similarity decided when should we start small d and when should we start small d star in the experiment. So, in this way the kinematic similarity is maintained. Now, is an exercise for you and it is easy one say instead of 7 pm I change it to 9 30 pm. Then I would ask what should be this time very easy one and I would request the listeners to calculate. If you calculate this simple thing you will be conversant with the kinematic similarity. Several questions will come 
we said about capital D and capital D star over here. I did not refer, make any diagram. I did not tell you the direction of action of D and D star. Suppose the directions are worked out in the prototype. Then in the analog model, those directions have to be maintained in a similar angle. If there were forces acting, we can calculate F1 here and F2 here. Then here also F1 is to F2 has to be maintained just like what I demonstrated in the previous discussion on the dynamic similarity and the force ratioing issues. If there are two layers with different densities of different viscosities, so here also we have to take those two layers with two densities and two viscosities. So, with this we have completed the principles and now I am going to set a problem and I will give you some clue how everything works in totality. I mean geometric dynamic and kinematic similarities working together and how to solve uh, or decide what would be our strategy for the analog model in the laboratory. So, the problem will be a combination of geometric similarity, dynamic similarity and kinematic similarity. Say by doing a geological field work, you have understood a prototype like this that this is 20 kilometer long, this is 10 kilometer wide and here this is 2 kilometer. So, this one would be 8 kilometer, here is a rock type capital A, here is a rock type capital B. They have viscosity let us say mu A is 10 to the power 19 poise mu b is equal to 10 to the power 18 poise which can be found out indirectly. The density is rho a is equal to 2.8 gram per centimeter cube and the density of rock b not much different 2.62 gram per centimeter cube. Okay. And the total duration of deformation is 100 million, million year up to 20 million year total duration of deformation. Let us say I call it capital D. So, this one is giving us capital D and it is equal to 100 minus 20 is equal to 80 million year. These numbers I am taking arbitrarily whereas, in real geological problems these numbers can be found out from the literature study. Okay. Sixty million year back here was intrusion of softer material along the lithological contract. 60 million year back softer material may be some magmatic material C entered and this deformation also continued. So, 60 million is the time when something else happened a magmatic intrusion has taken place. Now, we want to simulate this in the laboratory. So, this is going to be our model and here I can leave a question. In the model, this distance is 24 centimeter, only one length I am giving and I am asking you then how much should be this much, very easy. The boundary between A and B rock analogs, this should be how much? this should be how much and I am giving a clear hint apply geometric similarity. Okay. Next rho a is equal to 2.7 gram 
per centimeter cube, rho b should be taken how much? Apply the density ratio in it's a part of dynamic similarity and the viscosity of soft material A found through viscometer is mu small a and that is 10 to the power 8 poise. Then I am asking you what should be mu b? Okay. Apply the another aspect of dynamic similarity viscosity ratioing and find out small mu b very easy. Then the entire experiment was run for 15 hours. So, after how many hours from the start should I push by a, an injection through a syringe some soft deformable material C? a softer deformable material at the lithological contact at the small a slash small b contact. And you can find out this through kinematic similarity and if this 15 hours experiment I start like this 7, 10 am and finishes after 15 hours at what time it should be? If it is 7, 10 am time after the start of deformation that is 7, 10 am at what time it should be? Now one more thing I can add up also. This material capital C that is pushed has a much lower viscosity I said mu c is equal to 10 to the power 15 poise. If mu c is 10 to the power 15 poise, how much should be mu small c? Again apply the viscosity ratioing. Again if I put a density here, suppose when it was injected at that time the density somehow you come to know rho c was make it lower density than 2.6, let us say what how much to write 2.1 gram per centimeter cube, then how much should be rho small c, again apply the density ratioing. So, if you do this problem you will be very clear cut how the principles of analog modeling are working. When this D deformation was going on, D is all about a compression, decompression. Decompression was going on. Now I will add up, let us say here there was another compression which is D star compression. Now decompression acted from 100 million year back to 20 million year and I am telling that D star compression acted between 30 million year to 20 million year back. So, this is the time of action of D star compression. So, here in this experiment 7, 10 am when the experiment started and the experiment ran for 15 hours, at what time d star should be applied? From here the compression small d star and here is your capital D compression. So, 
where to write here is the last question probably is that at what time d star applied d star to be applied on the model when the total duration was 15 hours experiment started at 7 10 am so if you do that you are applying the kinematic similarity once again the decompression the force that was applied fd is equal to how much to write 100 units just like that and here d star compression is only 10 units so if here the decompression 50 units not 50 if it if we, if we said here 100 units so let's make it 2 units how much should be the d star what will happen if I do not maintain geometric similarity, I do not care about dynamic similarity, I am not interested about kinematic similarity, I just want to run, run an analog model. What is the outcome? It is in prototype and we have a corresponding model and we have carelessly created the model so that capital A by capital B length is not equal to small a by small b length that means and this prototype deformed for let us say 30 million years in the nature. So, 30 million year of some deformation. and we ran the model let us say for 7 hours ok. Now I am telling you while running the model we observe something spectacular happening at this point some structure produced after certain time and then it got destroyed. Here some structure formed at 3 hours from the start and got destroyed at 7 hour sorry at 6 hour. So, that means in the prototype also this has happened, but in geological field work we could not understand because the structure got formed and got destroyed. So, there is no evidence left in the field there is no evidence. So, the model is giving something very unique some structure produced and that got destroyed which also has lot of relevance. So, where in the prototype this has happened? Now, I cannot locate the point because capital A by capital B is not equal to small a by small b. Since they are not geometrically similar, I cannot find out geometrically similar point at this place. This is the problem. But if I had maintained a by b equal to a by b, I could have also found out the equivalent position in the real terrain. How to do that? Say we maintain this relation correctly. And when the structure was produced and getting produced and destroyed, we can easily find out from the model this distance is small m, this distance is small n, like coordinate. We could find out this point has a coordinate m, comma n. So, since a by b equal to a by b, what I will expect here to locate the point is that. This will be the coordinate capital N 
what is the relation between capital m and small m the relation is capital a divided by small m should be equal to small a by small m and we know this we know this we know small m in the laboratory experiments so we can look at m coordinate in the field similarly i can apply another geometric similarity how i am getting the confidence because we created the model and the prototype following the geometric similarity so i expect everything happening will be geometrically similar between the model and the prototype so what would be our next equation i can write down i can write capital b by small by capital n should be equal to small b by small n now in the laboratory experiment i know n value where the structure is produced and destroyed b value is also known capital b is also known from field so now what is left is capital n capital n can also be located so once capital m is located capital n is located therefore m comma n or the coordinate in the prototype is also located analog modeling is more than 100 years old you can find in google by searching photograph more than 100 years back geologist compressing the clay layer and getting folds it was popularized in 1960s by hans ramberg in uppsala university what is now known as the hans ramberg tectonic laboratory where still these such models are run initially people were skeptic in geoscience slowly it got acceptance 1980 85 or 90 onwards computational facilities increased so people moved into software deformation simulation then free software came why should we run analog model why should not we use the analytical model the idea is all models are welcome even analytical models through software is welcome but the point is to learn analytical model you have to spend long time you have to learn mathematics you have to learn handling software if it is not free you have to purchase whereas in analog model we can just take deformable soft material do these very simple things what i describe run the model you need not be an expert of fluid mechanics you need not know vector calculus but you can simulate things